Hey guys, I'm Daisho here playing some Magic, and I am finally going to get started on the deck guides. I've already done one, I've done the Apex Predator, Apex Predators, really Daisho, still. I've done the Pack Instinct one, and uh, and now we're going to basically uh, get started to moving on. So, I had first built this deck in a way that was very, uh, or was, wasn't was very token oriented, and uh, basically I said, I'm not going to, I'm going to try to fit all the best cards in this deck and just build a deck out of really good cards, because first of all, what I do have to say is that there's very few ways to run Peacekeepers where it's bad. If you're running 60 cards, like, even if you're running the 60 worst cards in this deck, you'll still have a pretty decent deck. Like, yeah, I mean, outside of, like, running these these top four cards in, in your library, which you probably won't even want, but, like, even if you do run them, they're not terrible. There's just, like, there's no bad cards in this deck, so you really can't go wrong um, by taking any of the cards out. So that's the first thing that I wanted to get off my chest. So, I mean, obviously there are going to be comments, like, saying, Daisho, I can't believe you didn't include that card. It's ridiculous. Get out of my life. Just go away. Please, like, leave now and never come back kind of thing. And uh, I feel like Loyal Sentry may, may just be one of those. Um, but without further ado, let's get started. So we got Doom Traveler. And Doom Traveler is just a really high value creature. Obviously the 1-1 one, one for 1 isn't really good unless you have an Anthem out. In which case it becomes a 2-2 two, two, and then it's a significant body and they have to deal with it. They can't just absorb the... Like, you can absorb 1 damage every turn for 20 turns. If there's if you really, if it's really going to take you 20 turns to put out a guy who can block a 1-1 one, one profitably, then uh, you are doing something wrong. So, But once it becomes a 2-2, two, two, then it actually becomes relevant. And, I mean, first I used to say don't play to your... Um, to your anthems, try to win without the anthems. But now that we've got the second honor of the pure, it means that there's four of them, and that there's actually a pretty good chance that you draw one every game. Um, or if you don't draw one of those, then there's a good chance that you draw at least a guardian's pledge. So I just like this fact. And then obviously, when it dies, it just gives you a flyer, and then that thing can usually get in too. So again, by itself, I probably wouldn't include Doom Traveler, but since there's a possibility to make it a lot bigger, I, I like it in the deck. Um, Ace. Ace is making a comeback. Who knew? I did not really... When I first built this deck, I was like, are you kidding me? This card's terrible. I'm not going to run it. But the uh, the other one-drops that um, you're given as options are just Doom Travelers and Loyal Sentry. So they're all one-ones. Um, and they just don't pack enough punch on their own. But the good thing about Ace is that you can just drop him early in the game. You don't have to worry about mass removal because you can just beat him with this guy. Since he has two power, he actually puts him on a decent clock. If you get if you get one of the other things out, then he's got three power. And I mean, generally, like you don't care if this trades with anything in their deck. I guess it it wouldn't be ideal if it traded with like a token from a Kranko's command. Um, but even then, it's it's like okay, well at least I took out one of their goblins. But anyway, as I was saying, this guy represents a significant enough threat. If you play him on the play, then it, there's just a very good chance that you can get him for four damage before they can do anything. If they're playing um, like a pack pack instinct and they don't draw one of their Garrix companions, then they can't do anything until turn three. If you got if you get this guy on the play, then he's going to be able to beat in for what six damage before they can even do anything. Well, you have your second turn and your third turn, so he'll be able to get him for four damage um, without them being able to do anything about that, and uh, and then maybe they'll be able to but either way he generally trades with stuff and that's usually profitable um, and he just provides that early uh, early presence that this deck doesn't really have like if you if you just try to throw in all the good cards you'll notice that it's just a lot of two and three drops and barely any one drop so I want to just get some early pressure so that's why I have this guy three might be a little much um, you could probably roll with with one because um, these one drops are not up to par with the rest of the deck like the rest of the deck has just cards that are just very good on their own and then the one drops are really only good in certain situations doom travelers being if you have an anthem out ace being if you um, are at the very start of the game but anyway I just want to get a creature out turn one at least um, as you'll see a little bit later. Anyway, I got a couple of these Accorder Paladins, which kind of go on along with the fact that I um, put made it more um, token-oriented than I used to have it. It used to be, like, almost no token aspects, and now I put in a little bit of it. Um, but anyway, a quarter Paladin is a pretty sweet card. It's a 3-1, so if they don't have a blocker, they're screwed. If they do have a blocker, it'll trade with something at least, so um, that's good. And it's got Battle Cry, so it makes all your tokens bigger, which is nuts. Um, makes your... Uh, ace big or whatever obviously you're gonna run all the anthems there's no version of the deck where you don't want the anthems and you want them in in every version so yeah journey of nowhere is just too good of an enchant of a uh, removal spell to use it's so much better than like pacifism because then creatures can't use their um abilities the time that it's worse than pacifism is if your opponent has entered the battlefield effects on their creatures and they also have enchantment removal so it doesn't usually happen but occasionally it'll come into play so um it's not like a hard removal spell i mean it is a hard removal spell but they can get their creature back so that's annoying anyway couple 
couple of raise the alarms. Wish there was a couple more, but it's still good. Attend tonight is obviously a really, really strong. Well, I mean, I guess I, I mean I can talk about this, but actually I'm not going to because I've talked about it before. I've talked about it in um, Martial War, and it, it has a lot of the same tendencies that it had there, and it's just it's just good, and you pretty much want it in the deck no matter how you build it. Attend tonight is a really strong card. Um, it's I found it really, really good in uh, M13 Limited, and I think it's also transitions well into. Uh, into this format. Not quite as well because, I mean, a 2 2 first strike in a limited format is really, really strong because it can kill um, any grizzly bear, which pretty much all the colors have a 2 2 for 2, which is just called a bear. If you didn't know, that's why WMG does that. Uh, but anyway, a 2 2 for 2 is just a bear, and uh, this guy just eats bears for lunch. And it also brings a 1 1, which can be really, really useful in this deck um, if you have either Crusader Roderick or an Anthem. So anyway, Crusader Roderick, I put in all three of them, and uh, obviously if you're building it the token way, you want it in. The problem is I have 13 3 drops. Um, Fiend Hunter is one of those cards that is actually really close. Um, I, I've been waffling on the edge of either running um, these these guys or um, or, ca or Captain's Call. So I had two Captain's Calls, and I think I'm actually going to put in one more Captain's Call and take out one of these. Um, so like having removal is fine and all, but Against some decks, this card doesn't really do much. Against Mono Black, it does absolutely nothing, which is just a hard matchup in general for pretty much all the decks. Um, and this guy does absolutely nothing because they just kill it, and then sometimes it helps them. Like you can't, you can't use this guy on a, on a Reaver, uh, not not Reaver Demon. Yeah, you can't use this guy on a Reaver Demon. You can't use this guy on a uh, Rune Scar Demon. So, and you can't use him even on like a Blood Hunter Bat early. So, there's just so many opportunities where this guy is absolutely garbage and useless so that's why I only have one of him in I want I mean I want to put in the two as you saw I already had two earlier but um, that was just that was just me trying it out but I actually do want to have uh, three captain's calls in instead glorious at them same thing as on the pure just worse um, in this deck is you're playing a mono white deck guardians pledges I have them both in you don't really want to draw two of them but you can still draw two of them it's almost always there's almost always a situation where you can use this card and it'll be beneficial, and a lot of the time it'll just absolutely win the game for you, so it's kind of insane. Oblivion Ring is obviously good. It, like, I mean, you can remove creatures or you can remove enchantments and artifacts, and sometimes, and there are some really strong artifacts and enchantments in this format now, so you have to worry about them. That actually could be an argument why Flicker Wisp goes in. Like, if they have a No Mercy out or something like that, you can just Flicker Wisp away the No Mercy, and then it comes back. But Flicker Wisp I viewed as just a very, very powerful card but not one that really fits with the theme of the deck so there are, there's definitely a different way you can run this you can run it with like all your flyers and like your higher casting cost creatures and um then it becomes a really evasive evasive evasion heavy deck and it also has really strong and powerful low cost of creatures so you could definitely run it that way but this time i decided to go for a little bit more gimmicky um and uh, synergistic deck so that's what i got with these captain's calls four mana for three creatures that sorcery speed is kind of terrible if they're all one ones but uh, the fact that it helps your Crusader Rodericks out, the fact that it's amazing if you have an Anthem out, means that I do like it. And uh, obviously it also works well with Odric. Um, Mausoleum Guard, pretty sweet card. Like, I mean, I wanted to include the Elgon Inquisitors too, but I felt like they didn't do enough. And um, even in the token generation uh, version of this deck, it's just a f at four drop, I really want it to be strong um, and have an impact on the game. So this guy, when he dies, is really, really amazing. When you have an Anthem out, you basically want him dead, and you're, like, almost wishing they could have just given you Midnight Haunting instead. But, you know, it's still really, really strong. Um, for those of you who don't know, Midnight Haunting is 2 and a white. For instant speed, put 2 one one Blyers into play. Anyway, Odric Master ta Tactician's jo just obviously amazing. If you get to swing in with him, you generally win the game, um, either by damage or by killing their... Uh, useful creatures that they can't defend well with and then just letting the other guys through and it's just it's always beneficial to have Odric on the table it, at the very least he's a 3-4 first strike which is well costed already for 4 so yeah and then I have uh, these guys at the top end which are just all amazing guys honored monk obviously like don't really need much explanation it's just a really really strong and powerful uh, vigilance creature brings in two one one flyers Sometimes those 1-1 one -one flyers are 2-2 two -two flyers, and then you're really happy. Um, Captain of the Watch, just it buffs some of your creatures in your deck, and it also puts through 1-1 one -one soldiers. So um, for its 6 mana, you basically get 9 power, which is beneficial. And it sometimes adds more power to your board. And then there's Sun Titan, which is just, I mean, like, this card's insane. And it almost always is useful for you. So um, now let's go to what I did not include. So you're going to hear, again, you're going to hear a pattern here. A lot of these cards are very good, and a lot of them should be in the deck, but you have to... So the difference between this game, Duels 2013 and 2012, is you basically really have to build a deck as opposed to trim a deck. 
So in in that in that game, you basically trimmed out all the bad cards, and whatever you were left with is what you use. But in this game, you actually some of these decks you really need to build them, and you need to say, okay, I think I need about this much removal. I think I need about this many flyers or this many defensive creatures. This many. And then, and then the same note, you need this many offensive creatures. With this deck, I decided to go with a very synergistic build. So I have some token generators, I have some things that benefit from token generators, and then I have some game-winning cards, and I also have some mid-range cards. So there are definitely cards that I could have used that are that could have been better, but also could have been worse. So anyway, Loyal Sentry falls under that category. Very good card. Not very synergistic with this deck. Quarter Paladin, I already have two of them in, and uh, sometimes it's not very useful because if the, if you're playing against decks where they have a lot of one ones or like if you're playing um, ancient wilds or, or goblins then um, this guy can get kind of killed pretty easily so that's not great master decoy is a pretty decent card i wish it was a one i wish it was just gideon's lawkeeper and then uh, maybe i'd reconsider running it but just the fact that you want to be curving out in this well you don't even really want to be curving out because as you can see the curve it's just a lot of one a lot of two i mean it's just one two three and then it just completely drops off so Turn four and on, you can pretty much just play a three drop, use Master Decoy, whatever, and uh, and be happy about that. But I just didn't find that I needed to remove their blockers in a token generating deck. You don't really need to remove their blockers. You can just chump block them, or and you can just swing past them. So I didn't really find it to be a big deal. Pacifism is great. It's like an amazing removal spell, but there are other better removal spells in this uh, deck, and I also felt like I didn't need that much removal for this deck, as I was just saying with Master Decoy, um, this deck isn't isn't 100% based on removal, it's kind of based on just winning with tokens. Um, Ring of Thune is a really strong card, all the rings are really good, especially in the monocolored decks, um, and it just basically makes one of your creatures into a gigantic threat, and giving it vigilance can only uh, benefit you, but uh, it's too slow. I mean, it's very slow. It's very clunky. If they kill your guy, then you you wasted like four turns. Um, but it's, I mean, it, it's good at making inefficient tokens into efficient threats. Um, I also think it's very good if you want to build this deck if it's really evasive. But um, I'm not doing that. So um, you could you could include the Ring of Thune, but I just wanted to have more synergies rather than just strong cards that are definitely good. Anyway, Spectral Rider is um, evasive and it's a very good card, but if you're playing against a white deck, then it's not very useful. It's just a grizzly bear, which is not good enough for this deck. So you have to basically bank on the fact that it's going to be a 2-2 Intimidate. Um, and sometimes it'll be a 3-3, which is good. So again, it's a good card, but there's not really much I can do. Squadron Hawks, um, there's three of them, so they're definitely useful. More useful than, it, than when there were just two of them. But um, like I find that they're... <laughs> I mean, I find them useful. I definitely do. I agree that they, they, they can help out the deck and make it stronger. But sometimes it's it's just... It doesn't work out. And, I mean, though it usually does. It's sometimes they're clogging up your hand and you want to be playing efficient threats instead of two-cost one with flyers, which is not, not an efficient threat. Um, if you have a um, one of the things out, one of the anthems out, then it's very strong. But um, th there's just... There's really not much I can do. Like, what... I mean... For every card that I didn't that I didn't include, then it's just like, what am I gonna cut? Sure, I could cut um, a captain's call, and that, that might be it. I mean, that might be a good idea. Like, but but the thing is, like, you have to put three of these in the deck, and then you have to so then you have to find other another three cards to cut. So I think the real reason why I didn't include this this card in the deck is because I didn't know what to cut, and uh, that's I mean I think that's just like a good enough reason. Um, there's there's really not much difference between having like three squadron hawks and three a and three aces other than the fact that ace comes down in turn one and it's just like you know anyway we already talked about um, fiend hunter flicker wisp is I also really uh, talked about it a little bit but there's so many situations where this is a good card almost to the point where I'm basically saying every single time you see this card it's gonna have a purpose so it's a very very good card but I mean if you look at professional decks and like lim and uh, not limited but like standard uh, modern legacy all these decks they could have any card they want in magic or any card in the format that they want and they only choose the cards that work for them they don't just choose the best cards well they build around the best cards generally but they can't just choose every card that's good or that's well costed and has a good effect they have to choose cards that um, help the deck perform and this this card does not really do uh, much for in in terms of synergy for the deck obviously if um, like you o-ring a fume spitter and then it, they sacrifice it in response then you can flicker with get rid of the uh flicker with your o-ring and then target something else or if early game you had to o-ring 
a um a venge vine or whatever but then later on in the game they play an elder scale worm and you have to deal with that then you can switch your o-ring to the uh the bigger threat so i mean it's it's it has a little bit of synergy with the deck but not enough that i think it's worth it intrepid hero is is a pretty powerful card destroy target creature with power four or greater but you generally don't want to destroy their creatures you kind of just want to swing around them so did not include it midnight guard is just not really good enough same with midnight uh patrol or night god patrol also not not really good enough pen and blade is just too expensive its effect is basically what I want it to be doing, but um, you're paying seven or you're paying three to play it, four to equip it for tap target opponent sacrifices a creature. Um, so it's it's really really expensive for its effect. Safe passage is is like I mean it's fog, but it's a lot better and it is three mana. So it's I mean you can't even be upset when people play this card against you because it's just it's just good. It's there. It's always gonna find its place or not always, but it's usually gonna be helpful. So. You can't really hate on people who use it, but I'm just... There's no way that I'm cutting a, a good card for Safe Passage. Anyway, Captain's Call, I don't really want four of them. I kind of do. Dawn Elemental is just an insanely strong, powerful card. Like, there's... N cards don't cost four white. That ne that almost never happens. I mean, sometimes it's like four and four white, but like, not even usually. Four white, I don't even... I'm just going to say off the top of my head that there are less than ten cards that cost four white um but i mean i could be wrong i but i'm pretty sure that that's that's accurate um, i think my audio is bugging out so I hopefully that's not the case but who knows anyway elgot inquisitor 2-2 two -two lifelink when it dies put a 1-1 one -one spirit to creature yeah so it's just not strong enough um it's good but not strong enough um sigil of the new dawn whenever a creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you may put one. You may pay one in white. If you do, return that card to your hand. So, some in like board stalls, this card's good, but in most situations, it's just not useful enough to warrant a spot in the deck. I don't think. Windborne Charge is a pretty good finisher. It basically says deal six damage to target opponent if you have a bunch of tokens, sometimes more. But um, it's really clunky, and I want to keep more creatures in the deck. Arcane of Justice is just a strong card, and it's well costed as well. But I don't have room for it. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I didn't include the last Captain of the Watch. I didn't want too many six drops. And then all these other cards are kind of garbage. I mean, yeah, it kills one creature for five mana. Cool story, bro. Um, this thing gives me hexproof, whatever. That's not even relevant most of the time. 5-5 five, five Flying Vigilance is always going to be relevant, but it's seven mana. And then these two things are just, like, not good enough. So, anyway, that's my build for Peacekeepers. Keeping the peace with the Keepers of the Peace um, towards... Uh, the peacekeeping so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed that video and you should all have a wonderful day bye